love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You Podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Expert in You podcast. I'm your host, Ann Carden, and you are going to love my guest this week because I'm so excited and her title says it all. She is the brand magician and the dreamer extraordinaire. I have Johanna White with me. Welcome to my show. Thank you. I'm so delighted to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Yes, we are. I really wanted Johanna to be on my show because I have to say, I come across a lot of branding people, a lot um, in the online world. And oh my gosh, we are talking exquisite work. I mean, just exquisite. And because I help people build a high-end coaching and consulting business, it really just landed with me. And I thought I have to have her on because she really has a luxury brand business. So I'm super excited to have you on. Thank you. Yes, I accept that compliment. I appreciate it so much, especially from someone who spends as much time in that space as you do. Well, thank you. Johanna, you have quite a story and it, I mean, it is nothing short of a miracle. And so I can't wait for people to hear your story, but then what you've done from that is, has just been amazing. So I'm going to let you start there. Uh, First of all, tell us a little bit more about what you do and then kind of how you got here. Perfect. Absolutely. So my name is Johanna White. I am the founder and CEO of Design by Joe Studio, and I do brand identities, custom websites, premium messaging, all of that fun stuff. But what I really do is I take people who are the elite experts in their space, who are the best in the world at what they do, and help them finally look as good as they are so that they can magnetize their dream audience and opportunities and finally be as delightfully expensive as they deserve to be. And so, love it. Love it, love it. <laughs> so that is how I spend my days. Um, I, I'm just like, I love the luxury space for just how expansive it is for the types of visionaries that play here and for the types of magical worlds that I get to create via, you know, beautiful websites and beautiful brand collateral. But I wasn't always here. And I think that's probably the story you want me to start with. So let's go back 10 years, which is really the moment it pivoted. And I got kicked in the pants by a brain tumor. So prior, we'll call it BT, (laughs) Before oh, no. tumor. <laughs> in a name. Okay. <laughs> the first like 25 years of my life and, and early career, I lived very safe, played it small. Um, mediocre was the name of the game, kind of not on purpose, just because I was scared to fail and I was afraid of haters and I had imposter syndrome and things that many of you have probably experienced in your life. And I let that rule me. Fear really drove the bus. And um, I was, I got a degree in design. I started working at an agency. So technically I was working in my field, but I was doing like the bottom of the totem pole work that you could possibly be doing and still call it design. (laughs) I was proofreading ads for errors before they went to press, like working second shift so that I would catch everything that the day staff had 
created and, mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um, paid barely anything. I don't even think I had health insurance because they kept me at 30 hours a week. So it was like small. Oh, right but, under. <laughs> <laughs> right under. And I wanted to go elsewhere so many times. I wanted to apply to some firm in New York or I wanted to go out to California. But every time I thought about it, the little voice in my head was like, oh, you're just lucky to have a job. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, don't give up something good. You know, yeah, it's not great, but it's easy or Mm -hmm. these kind of things. But then uh, one night I went to bed perfectly healthy, very fit. One of the strongest people in my family and my family is quite large. And I I really like my whole identity was in how healthy and strong I was Mm -hmm. because success wise, I didn't have a lot else going for me. Went to bed that healthy, fit, strong person and woke up in the middle of the night with a pounding migraine that lasted for three days. And when it finally went away, I was left with partial paralysis down my left side. I was left with collapsed vocal cords, so I couldn't talk above a whisper. Um, My sternocleidomastoid muscle that runs on my neck was completely atrophied, as were the muscles behind my clavicle. So um, it stopped me from being able to raise my arm. I couldn't swallow. It messed with my soft palate and food started coming out of my nose instead of going down my throat. Oh my gosh. Like nothing says wake up like Oreos coming out your nose. They were not made to do that. And that will tell you. (laughs) First of all, I just have to say, I just, I love your attitude about it. And even the fact that you're just even kind of making light of it and making it a bit humorous, but what What a story. Oh my gosh. So keep going. (laughs) And I do not in any way discount the, the massiveness that it was, but I look back and I'm actually grateful for, Mm -hmm. for the challenge that it created for me to overcome. It became the momentum and the pivot, uh, for me at that time. And honestly, when it happened, I went from this safe, small, certain life to, everything about my life coming back as the results are inconclusive. Mm -hmm. That was the answer we kept getting from the doctors. Is it cancerous? We're not quite sure. The results are inconclusive. Is it growing six Mm -hmm. months later? We're not sure. Could be the same, could be bigger. The results are inconclusive. And for someone who had built their whole life on certainty, Mm -hmm. literally given up all opportunity for the sake of the known, Mm -hmm. this was just devastating. I didn't know how to act or what to do, but I did know that looking around at my life and the impact or lack thereof that I had had up till then, that if the doctors didn't know if I was going to live or die, if I had six months or six years or whatever, like if they didn't know, there was no way I was going out like this. There was no way I was leaving this earth without having actually tried. And so I licked my wounds for a little bit. And then I decided that I was going to do whatever I could do um, (laughs) to become the person I wanted to be on the other side of this tumor. Mm -hmm. So on the business side of things, within like two weeks of the diagnosis, I quit my job, which everyone was saying I should quit and go on Medicaid to cover oh, goodness. Lo- to cover looming potential like six figure bills mm-hmm. um, for brain surgery and all those kind of things. But I thought about that option and I thought if I do that when I'm still physically able to be active and to work, one, I like wouldn't feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't feel like I was doing everything I could do. I would feel Mm -hmm. like I was giving up. I love that. And two, if I did that and made that choice, I would perhaps be three years down the road in the future, still at the exact same place in my life, except now I'm like the brain tumor girl. That would be what I was known for. And I thought, I don't know if I have three years to waste and I need something to think about and focus on besides the fact that maybe this could be the end. Mm -hmm. I need to believe that there is a Johanna on the other side of this and she's a badass and she does not live in fear anymore. And so I quit my job and with 
like I literally walked out the door of the office and started knocking on business doors down the street, popping my head in saying, hi, I'm Johanna and I design stuff. Do you need stuff designed? And, uh, <laughs> what a pitch. <laughs> right? Okay, big question. Did it work? <laughs> it worked a little. It worked just enough. I met one or two business owners who needed some freelance design work. And uh, with like eight hours of promised freelance work on the clock, I filed my first LLC. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's how it's done. It, it kind of reminds me my very first uh, business that, well, I shouldn't say my business. It was my second business, but I handed out flyers at a back to school barbecue. Hey, do you, <laughs> do you want to do this with me? And so it's very much the same thing, but I want to bring up a point there, Well, actually there are many points I could bring up, but the thing is, I love that you just literally jumped in and did it and you didn't let anything up to that point define you. You just let it push you and motivate you and turn that into something really special and really powerful. And um, that that just just speaks volumes right there. But I also love that you got out there and you actually took some action and said, I'm just, I'm just going to try this. I'm just going to do it. So good. Oh, my gosh. That's so great. Good job. Yeah, let's let's hone in on that action step there, because I want your listeners to be able to take some things away from this more than just inspiration, which I hope they'll get, but also some very like nitty gritty things that they can do to their business and maybe their brand right away. And one of the things that I discovered, and I will tell you another story that illustrates this so much during the whole health journey, because I feel like we left them hanging a little bit and I need to wrap that up for them. Uh, Aside from the fact that I'm still standing here, (laughs) I need to tell them what happened. But uh, one of the things that I learned during this was what you believe matters, Mm -hmm. but it's what you do about what you believe that matters way more. And so in that moment, I believed, had believed my whole life that I was capable of greatness, that I had potential, that I could do something amazing and have impact on the world, but I wasn't living like it. I was Mm -hmm. taking no steps towards it. And suddenly faced with uncertainty and with very little left to lose, I was finally brave enough to say, it's time to do something about the fact that I believe I am capable of serving clients on a much larger scale. And so me starting the business was that taking the action on what I believed. And Then I learned that same lesson again, because during the health journey, during the the tumor, like I've told you what happened on the business side of things, but what was happening on the health side of things at the same time was just miracle after miracle. And it was that the day after I was diagnosed, a very dear friend of my family showed up on on my parents' porch and he had this little iPad, brand new, handed it to me and he said, this is tools for the battle and we're going to fight. So he had preloaded it with the olive tree Bible app and every scripture he'd ever found about healing. And because he knew I was a Christian and he wanted to give me tools that were already in my arsenal. And basically he challenged me and he said, in the coming days and months, you're going to have the opportunity to tell a lot of people about what's happening. Mm -hmm. But you are the author of your own story. How are you going to write the ending? And what you say about this is going to change the outcome. So he challenged me when I wanted to lick my wounds, tell a sob story and tell everyone, you know, poor me, I'm so sick, this is happening. He challenged me to say it a different way and to find all of the evidence that healing is real and that it can happen and focus on that and speak that out and listen to that and ignore everything else, which people will tell you is burying your head in the sand or being in denial or, or you'll tell yourself, I don't want to be a fraud. I don't want to tell people that all is well and good when it's clearly not, I am not a liar. All of these things, I'm going to look like a crazy person. If I go around saying I'm going to be healed and then I'm not, but I like, I let it sink in. And at first I wanted to punch him because he's telling me I need to like, this is my chance to actually do something about what I believe. I've said my whole life that I believed in God and I believed in healing, but he challenged me to right. actually do something about it. Mm-hmm. And I, first of all, what a gift, what, what a, a gift. gift. 
I my can't, goodness. I can't say enough times how thankful I am for him. I was just talking to him on the phone the other day and I said, I wrote an email about you. Did you read it? And I, <laughs> I just wrote a chapter in a book and it's all about you. Like, I can't wait to publish it and send it to you. And you changed my life and hopefully many others through me. Yes, but absolutely. He was brave enough to say the thing that would be uncomfortable. And if you have people like that in your life, embrace them, invite them in whether it's in your life or your business, they will be the ones that you should listen to their counsel because they're not afraid to tell you what you may not want to hear. That's so powerful. My goodness, I love that. So so I accepted his challenge and I started like talking to my symptoms, talking Mm -hmm. to my body and saying, you are healed and you are well. And by his stripes, you were already healed. And if you live by the flesh, you're going to die. But if you choose to live by the spirit and put to death the misdeeds of the flesh, which a tumor is totally a misdeed, it's not meant to be there, then you will, you will live and you get the chance to choose. I changed my inputs. I just listened to everything I could find on healing, ignored everything else. And what started to happen was I started to see my symptoms get a little better, a little better, but then the fear would kick in. And Mm -hmm. it would kick in hard, like, oh, you're just imagining it. You're not actually better. You need to do something about this. You like, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. I don't know if you've ever had a hamster wheel stuck in your brain on the same soundtrack, just running on repeat, but that is what it was. And it seemed like I'm saying good things, but I can still hear the hamster wheel in the back of my brain. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wasn't sure immediately if I could do something about the tumor, but I knew I could do something about the fear because clearly it was having a big impact. I would feel um, when I would stop thinking about what was going on, I would focus on faith and the future. um, Mm -hmm. I would start to notice that it didn't hurt as bad or maybe something functioned a little better or I could swallow better instead of choking. But then the fear would kick in and I would go from partially collapsed throat to collapse me on the bathroom floor, unable to breathe. The fear would make the symptoms almost double. And it took me a little while to realize that was happening, but I started to pick up on it and go, okay, the tumor is killing me and the fear is killing me twice as fast. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what I can do about the tumor. I know I can do something about the fear and that something is drown it out. Mm -hmm. And so I took his challenge. I did something about what I believed by getting so, so intentional about what I said, what I thought, like the words that were coming in, the words that I didn't let in, the people that I let exit from my life when they would suggest that I needed to um, stop hoping, stop dreaming, and I just need to accept this (laughs) and Mm -hmm. those kind of things. Like sometimes people will try to prepare you for the worst or try to be helpful by, by saying, Oh, you're starting that business, but the market's really risky right now. You should be careful. Right. Oh, you want to invest in that part of your growth. Like this happened to a friend of mine when they tried that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it happens. Right. And whether it's health or business, well-meaning people sometimes can't be in your head. And so I took action. I like only allowed in something about faith. And I only spoke words about faith and my body started responding. My symptoms got better and better and better. And it was not a perfect journey. It was not fast miracle, but Mm -hmm. within six months, most of my symptoms were gone. I was back to functioning almost normally. And by the time I had my last doctor visit about two and a half years after the initial diagnosis, and then I never went back and my body is healthier than it's ever been. And just every, like every day I get to be a walking, talking, living miracle. I, oh my gosh, so, so good and so powerful. And I have to tell you, there aren't very many podcasts I record where I have chills, <laughs> but it, that, that story, and this is the second time I've heard it, Johanna. I mean, 
I heard this when we talked about putting, you know, having you on the show and it's still, it just, oh my gosh, it just speaks to my heart. And I love that you're, you literally are a walking miracle and you're a testament to faith and um, to your Lord and Savior. So that is near and dear to my heart. So I love that. Wow. And then you, then you really started living life. You started, you, you did more with your business, but you also hit another point in your business where it was now time to make another big move, a big, big move for you. That could have been scary. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So um, you would think that having a brain tumor would be enough motivation for the rest of your life and <laughs> that you would oh, simply forget, right? That you would simply be this always positive I survived. I'm a walking miracle, like motivated towards massive growth. Nothing scares me ever again, person. But as Zig Ziglar likes to say, motivation like showers should be done and applied daily. Um, and that's, so that's right. Boy, that's an old saying. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's so true because even as something as massive as that can can only get you so far if true. you don't stay in this space of growth and intentionality. And so what happened was I had the tumor, quit my job, started my business. In fact, I actually started three companies in the same year in this burst okay, of well, like- that was a little overkill. I just I know. To say, that's a little much, but go ahead. In this, in this frantic burst of, I don't know how much time I have left. I'm going to do something with my life and we're just going to like try all the things and brave all the scary business uh, mm -hmm. world. But then, you know, it's three, four years later, probably I'm healed. I'm doing well, but I looked around my business and I realized, wait a second. I just went from one mediocre job with low pay and a boss I could blame for it to my <laughs> own mediocre <laughs> job as a graphic designer with low pay. And I'm the only one to blame for this. Mm -hmm. And once again, I went, wait a second, I did not come this far to only come this far. And it is time to take a look at what those dreams really were for impact and assess like mm -hmm. we are not even close. And so I looked at my company and I realized that I was showing up in the world as a commodity. Mm -hmm. I, I was simply looking the same as every other designer out there, here's my white space looking portfolio. Sure, it's clean and elegant, but it tells you nothing. It has no messaging. It, it's just okay. And I'm a little embarrassed by it. And if I send someone there, I'm saying, look at the work, but don't look at my website, okay? Right. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to tell people till I'm blue in the face that I can design a luxury brand for them and make every touch point so magnetic that it makes their customers stop in their tracks all the way down to something as simple as a business card. And I'm talking and talking and saying this, but I wasn't showing it. And looking at my own brand, I went, wait a second. I learned this four years ago. What you believe matters, but what you do about what you believe matters way more. And I realized I believed that I had something great to offer clients. I believed I had expertise. I knew it. I had way more to offer than simply having people come and say, hey, I, I need a logo. I like purple. I like dogs. Make me one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and just being a you know someone who spits out what you think you want instead of curates what you actually need and what your business needs for growth and what you need to get ROI on that brand and what you need to position yourself in the market where you want to serve. And so I went, wait a second, I should be good at this. This is what I say I do for my clients, but I'm not doing it for myself. I'm not acting on my belief. So I um, took three months off. I took no clients for three months. I blocked my calendar and I treated myself like my own client. And I went, nuts and had so much fun just truly positioning my own brand. Right. I, I took courses on messaging and messaging strategy and I redid that so that my brand message would communicate my value, but that it would also help me understand what made me the best at what I do and what really, um, what way I served my clients and, and 
what was their biggest problem that I was solving? Because as I learned along the way, positioning yourself like a commodity will result in people paying commodity prices. Right, right. <laughs> they pay commodity prices for, for service, but they pay premium prices for solutions. Yes. And they pay luxury prices for experience. Yes. And I went, okay, it's time for me to just stop telling people about this. And instead it's time to become a show it all. And so I got super intentional about my brand styles, my photography. I did art direction. I went out and bought um, an Hermes bracelet and these like jeweled up nails from this designer in LA. And I saw these. that on your website, by the way, <laughs> it's just gorgeous. Go ahead. Thank you. But I thought if, if the, if I could create one photo that would represent how a brand can be implemented in a way that makes you feel something to your core when you look at it and not just feel something, but feel like you just met me, mm -hmm. who I am and what I have right. to offer in one picture, what would that be? And the same with the messaging. Like if it would say one thing that would speak directly to the person I want to work with the most and help them know what I can do to change their life and solve their biggest problem and create their most magical experience, what would that be? And then I called my photographer and shot the photos and redid my website like I was my own client. I did mock-ups first and created the vision, wireframed it. And the end result was sexy and sleek. And it was a brand that visually validated my own value to my customers. So it was no longer just me, a little solo soldier marching along saying, I can, I can make something pretty for you. What do you need? And instead right. it was me stepping into becoming the expert in my space, becoming more of what my clients were saying they wanted, mm -hmm. which was, we want someone who will walk us through the whole process. We right. want someone who knows what we don't know about our brand, about our competitors, about the market, about what it's like to appeal to the luxury space. We just want to come to you and say, this is me. This is what makes me amazing. And by the way, maybe they don't even know exactly what makes them amazing. Right. They, like they just have that sense. They know that they have something phenomenal, but they can't enunciate it or find the words to say it. And that's okay too. I wanted to become the expert that could mine that content out of them, like mining for diamonds. I, first of all, I love everything you're saying, but I actually want to hit on a couple of points and kind Please of really bring them out. <laughs> and one of them is that you said, instead of telling people, I basically want to show them. And you did that by aligning yourself with what you were doing. And I always say, it's very much like I help people bring these really, really high end big deals, really high end clients. But if I charge peanuts for my services, then it doesn't align. The pricing doesn't align with the people that are, are you, that I'm telling that I can help them do this. And so it's very much the same thing. We have to walk our walk our walk and walk our talk, I guess, is what I should say, right? Walk the talk. And so I think that's a really powerful thing to for people to know because so many people. Johanna, there's they're experts on the inside of their business, but the outside doesn't reflect. Yeah. Them. And then they end up taking the wrong clients. They end up building their business in the wrong way. They end up getting paid peanuts when they should be getting paid gold, right? And so I love that you bring that out and you you help them really elevate that to a level where, like you said, I mean, it's all about the outside perception first. You have to first get interest. And a lot of people don't get that part. They think, well, I'm really good at what I do. I'm really phenomenal. I, nobody can do what I can do. But then the outside perception isn't that. And it doesn't show that and it doesn't validate them in that way. So yeah. um, I, I just wanted to point that out because that's such an important factor. Your brand should be the foundation of your entire business, of everything that you do and what you are known for. And so you are doing that so beautifully for people. Okay, continue. <laughs> okay, let me wrap up this story. But I love what you said there. And I just want to iterate that what you're saying is so true. The knowing and the showing are two sides of a very necessary coin. You need both. Yes. I, I tell my clients, like, we're going to take you through this 
I call it the unstoppable brand experience. And during this experience, first in phase one, we're going to help you know your value. Because if you don't know why you're worth more, or if you don't know the people who you're perfectly positioned to serve, who are lining up to pay someone top dollar, then you're not going to be able, like your visual brand is going to fall flat. It won't be built on a foundation of that confidence and that knowing. Right. But then once you know your value, it's not enough for you to just know it. Otherwise, if you just know it now, you're more frustrated than ever because you are that like, oh, I know I'm great at this. Why does only my mom and my na- <laughs> right. neighbor understand that? <laughs> and right. or maybe it's a it's a small business, but you know that you could be 10 million, 20 million, 100 million, like you could be doing so much more. And so first you got to know it, but then you got to show it, which is that creating that visual brand that aligns with that knowledge, with that message. And like, first you find your why, but then you create images that truly are worth a thousand words because Mm -hmm. they were intentionally created to tell that story. And then you find a way to add more value because it's not enough for you to just show up in the world as this beautiful aspirational brand if you don't live up to it. Right. So you create it and then you step into those shoes and you go, yep, I am that hundred million dollar company. You buy the now. bracelet. That, you buy the bracelet. <laughs> yep. No, I think, I, 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 think, I do think uh, there's a really powerful thing in what you're saying. And that is to really, so many people, Johanna, make decisions based on where they are right now. They don't make decisions. I say this all the time. Are you basing, are you making financial decisions based on what your financial situation is right now or where you want it to be because you won't get there if you are staying in what is right now and it's the same thing with what you're talking about if people don't step into that that new uh exquisite them that they want to be and they don't make the investment they don't make the leap they're not going to move forward they're going to stay right where they are and that's a really hard thing for people to grasp so often, but it's, it's just so true. So I love that you brought that up. Even worse, they might not stay where they are. Very likely they could they go back. slowly go backwards because if true. you're not growing and expanding, you're going to be passed That's by the true. people who do know that they have something amazing and are willing to take the leap and the risk and the, and reap the reward of showing up in the world as 100%. that confidently. So yeah. So you asked me to finish that story. I'm good at leaving stories hanging today, Anne. I don't mean to be. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just, I, so, keep, I keep adding to the conversation. Which is perfect. It's going to be so much more valuable for your listeners because of that. But what happened when I did this was I went from being able to um, work for clients that were okay, but were very demanding, were I was way underpaid. I was barely paying the bills um, to literally being able to 5X my price Mm -hmm. within like a month. And I went from getting people who would receive my proposal and say, "Hmm, that's kind of expensive. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to look for someone cheaper to receiving proposals at much higher amounts so much more enthusiastically because one, I knew who my perfect client was because to the perfect client, you're the perfect price to the wrong client. You'll always be too expensive. Right. (laughs) And so you're looking like knowing who your client is very crucial in building that brand. But I, I went to attracting my perfect clients because now my messaging and visuals spoke to them and then them getting proposals or us talking and them saying, what does it take to work with you? I'll do right. anything. And I would say they'll pay, they'll happily pay your prices when they really yeah. believe what they're going to get. Yes. Yeah. And you will be so much more confident in asking for those prices when you have done this, gone through this, and you now are super confident that you know what you're worth, but also that when you tell someone I'm worth this and they go check you out online, they look at your social media or they look at your website what they see backs up that statement of value. So like your website shouldn't just be beautiful. It should visually validate your value to your ideal clients. And a lot of times people say, 
I'm not sure my website is really working. I mean, it's pretty, but I feel meh about it. Um, maybe you could you could just tweak a couple things and make it work better. But <laughs> most of the time, if you look at a website and it it's not working for them like like it should, mm-hmm. what's actually missing is the brand. Right. Is, the intention is the emotion is the message and the story and the like the positioning. Right. It's not moving a box here would be better than moving a box there. Right. Right. It's like the brand, the website is simply a touch point of their brand. It is a piece of it, piece of the puzzle. And so I did that. I was able to five X my prices in a year, close way more sales with way more aligned clients. And I had fun things happen, like probably the day after I launched my new site, I was working in a coffee shop and some guy came over to me and asked if he could borrow my power cable because he saw I also had a Mac. I was like, weird, but sure, (laughs) no problem. (laughs) Happy to help a fellow coffee shop warrior out. And so he borrowed it. He came back 30 minutes later to return it and he asked what I did. And I gave him one of my cards and it was the one that's on the homepage of the website now. And he looked at it, pets it. And he's like, Oh, walks away, comes back five minutes later and says, I looked you up immediately because your card was so compelling and everything about your website matches what I thought. When I saw the card, you clearly understand branding. You clearly understand luxury. I need you to do some work for me. And by the way, I work for Google. And Oh, wow. (laughs) That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. This works. It, mm-hmm. it speaks for you. What a great story. Yeah, I always I always say really a, a strong brand will influence buyers. It will influence them. You don't have to sell them. Yes. They're already influenced to want to work with you or to want to buy. And I was so, when I checked you out, obviously, when we were looking at having you on the show, and my my assistant does a lot of the looking for who I would want on the show. And when I checked you out and looked at everything you were doing, I, I was just, I have to tell you again, and I, I really say this very sincerely, I come, I know so many people in the branding space, but I have to say you are at the top of your game. 100%. Thank yes. Thank you so much. You, and you're you're the epitome of a luxury brand and what you do. Yes. Well, thank you. And I I think beyond the work that we just talked about like how I got there and mm-hmm. treating myself like a client and taking myself through the process that I now take my own clients through so that they can get there years sooner than I did. Um, Beyond that, what you see in my site and in my brand is passion because Mm -hmm. I am so, so passionate about helping other people step into their limitless potential because I know what it's like to look around and maybe you don't have much time left. Maybe you have all the time in the world, you think, but that feeling in your stomach when you look around and went, I have left so much of what I'm capable of on the table. Yeah. And I have been afraid to show up and I should be my biggest fan and my biggest self promoter, but I don't really want to send people to look at what I have, how I'm showing up in the world. And I know that feeling so well. And I just can't stand seeing truly talented, exceptional personal brands and, and business owners feel that or, or suffer from it. And I really can't stand when someone is amazing, they have an amazing product or service, but they're losing out on their market share to a competitor who actually has a far inferior product or service right. and they, but they have great branding. Right. I can't stand that. Too. Like yes. I want to yeah. fix that. And I want to fix people feeling like they have to undercharge or maybe they've got a profitable company or maybe their company has a lot of revenue, but their Mm -hmm. margin, their margins are like wafer thin Mm -hmm. because they're afraid to charge what they're worth. They're afraid to charge what they need to charge. I liked earlier, you talked about how you help with pricing and that is so, I talk about it a lot too, which is seems kind of funny, 
like how would pricing come into branding? But in reality, it, it does. It, it does so much. Like when your brand supports you, you can finally charge what right. you're worth. And when right. you finally charge what you're worth, you attract the people who use price as an indicator of excellence. Like yes, or significance. Well, and, and here's the, they, because they, they do have to be so aligned and they have to go hand in hand. And I always say, so my favorite saying, you can't get Lamborghini prices if you look like the cheap used car. <laughs> if you look like the Ford <laughs> <Pinto>. <laughs> so, Because, because outside perception is everything. And so it, that is because I help people build their brand online and elevate their brand. Now I don't do the design and all that, that you do, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to collaborate with you. Yeah. But that is a big piece of the foundation of us bringing you up into the expert status and being able to get those clients that I'm trying to help you get. So those are such important pieces, but oh my gosh, I can't believe how fast this time went. I, we, <laughs> I don't even think we talked about the stuff that we actually had down that we were going to talk about, but this was such a fun conversation. And there was so much gold in this, in just your story and what you did with that and how you stepped into new opportunities and, and just took bigger risk. I love all of that because that's so important for people to know. You cannot get somewhere playing it safe. You can't get somewhere um, if you if you hold back, if you let fear, imposter syndrome, all of those things that creep in, that's not how you become successful. That is not how you build something premium, something special. Let's just say special. And <laughs> you said extraordinaire, yeah, like a dreamer extraordinaire. So I think that's really a uh, cool phrase that you could use. But anything you want to add? I would just, I think you're right. We talked about so much the other day that it's like, oh, I want to tell them all the things about branding, but they can connect with me later and learn more about that. But I would love to just say that one of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to, to their brand and therefore their company is thinking that the time to work on it is later or that it's not that important. Um, we were talking the other day how your brand is like, many people think of it like a, a necessary part of identification, a passport mm -hmm. that you need to be able to board the plane of business. When in reality, it is the jet fuel that carries the plane of business to mm -hmm. your goals. And it is so like so common for businesses to get stunted because they're not leveraging the power of their brand. They think it's just a necessity when it's the launch pad. It is right. the catapult. And so I just want to remind people that it's not something you have to do. It's something you get to want to do. You, you should want to like, yes, for my clients, I make the branding process an experience because it's truly something to be enjoyed. And when you enjoy it, you're going to get way better results on the content and such that we're creating during the, the process. But yeah, it's like, don't wait. Don't wait until later or until you think the market will tell you how you need to show up because perceptions are much easier to create intentionally yes. than change later. And they're always happening. Branding is always happening. It's either happening right. by you on purpose or to you just based That's on how, you're, point. Yes, how you're showing up by default. Absolutely. Such a, oh my goodness, such a great conversation with you. I have been, it's been so much fun having you on Johanna and how can people reach out to you, get a hold of you. And, and I have to say, go check her out, go look at her <laughs> stuff. It's just, you'll be blown away just, and I don't say that lightly, you will literally be blown away. So how can people get a hold of you? Well, if they have resonated with what we talked about today, and they're ready to create a far more impactful brand that is dripping in magic. <laughs> and they're ready to I have a that. website that feels like a magical world, like you just want to hang out there and you feel the emotion and you know exactly why you want to work with them immediately. Then they can go to my website, which is designedbyjoestudio.com and click the link at the top 
And it's also every other link down the page because I'm extremely consistent. <laughs> <laughs> and they can book a free 30 minute consult. I have a pretty packed schedule over the next few months, but I did, res- I knew I was coming on here. So I left some slots open. I'm not sure exactly when this will air, but you'll let me know and I'll make sure to clear some spots on my calendar so that your guests can get um, a free brand console and we will talk about how we can help them drip with that same magic as well. That's perfect. Well, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for sharing your story and your expertise. And it has just been such a great conversation. We'll put all of your links and everything in the show notes so people will be able to grab those, um, but definitely go connect with her, you know, so um, super excited to have you here. So thank you again. And everyone, please share this episode with someone that could use Johanna's services or someone that you know that would really resonate with the show and make sure that you also subscribe and thank you for being here. God bless you and go rock your business. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this episode, I want to invite you to go check out a free training that I have at expertinu.us. It is a training that I have on how you can get ultra premium dream clients, scale your business, get more freedom, and really simplify your business and multiply your money. So go check that out. And again, that is expertinu.us. I want to thank you for being here with me this week. I hope you found massive value. Please always leave a comment, feedback, or a question. We check them all. And I want you to go rock your business and make sure you join us again next week. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.